Hey everybody, happy Thursday this time. It's Emily Yenner here with 1212 Body Works in Brookfield. Um, I'm here a couple days late because this Tuesday, when I usually come on for Tuesday Toasty Tips, I was actually at the hospital with Liam, our son, who's just turned nine. Um, unfortunately, he had to have an appendectomy yesterday, but he's doing great. Um, all is well, and I hope that you and your children or grandchildren never need to go to the hospital, but if you do and you live in the Milwaukee area, Children's Hospital is absolutely amazing. So, um, so thank you for understanding why I wasn't here on Tuesday, and thank you for everyone who has shared their well wishes for Liam and, and for me and Brian. Um, it's not easy making those decisions for a little one, so, but all is well and we're into healing mode and trying to get back you know our our sleep that we kind of lost so anyway hope that you guys are all doing well i'm here to talk about uh, more gimmicks versus gadgets for the feed i brought tootsie again so that we could um hey kelly how are you kelly blake she and i go way back it's nice to see you here kelly um so I brought Tootsie back out to show again the complexities of the foot. So we're here to talk about orthotics and shoe inserts, um, specifically, you know, the, the gimmicks versus gadgets. And I think uh, it's hard to say whether or not I, you know, I, I, I have some good feelings and bad, bad feelings about orthotics. So I'm here to kind of shed some light on all of that. So um, let me know in the comments if you have orthotics. Have you ever tried them? And what was your main reason for uh, wanting them or, or being prescribed them? Did you have actual foot pain or did you have back pain or some other knee pain, hip pain, any, any other type of pain? Um, let me know if you, if you can. So typically, um, orthotics are prescribed for people who have foot pain. So they may have plantar fasciitis like we talked about in one of our early videos. They may have some foot joint pain, uh, which is you know related to arthritis or inflammation in the joints. Uh, those people, uh, sometimes people who are diabetic have to have shoe inserts made to help support just because of lack of circulation and sensation in the feet. So sometimes the uh, orthotic or shoe insert can help keep their foot in a, in a good position. Uh, the other main reason that people ask or are, ugh, are prescribed um, orthotics are for what's called metatarsalgia. So the metatarsals are these bones that are in the middle of the foot. Oh, I guess you can, well, these are all the tendons, but the bones through the middle of the foot are the metatarsals. And if there is pain there, sometimes getting the foot positioned more correctly with an orthotic can potentially alleviate some of the tension and pain there. Hey, Katie, thank you for being here as well. Nice to see you. So um, sometimes, actually, there are some other reasons that people will get a, an orthotic prescribed for them. Sometimes knee pain can be um, improved when the foot is in a better position. Um, some people who have shin splints or who are runners, who have IT band issues, Achilles tendonitis, um, bunions like we've talked about, can find some improvements with the heel, the heel position being ideal and then the rest of the foot being um, able to accommodate that mechanics uh, and speaking of mechanics our foot ankle knee hip biomechanics are super complex like we've got tootsie here to show you just the complexities in the foot anatomy this isn't even like starting to talk about like how all of this stuff functions together so the the people who are making orthotics really need to have a major like in-depth understanding hey Connie thanks for being here thanks for all of your support and comments and love that you've been spending uh, spreading for my family and uh, watching all these videos I really appreciate you being here Connie um, so anyway so our foot mechanics like they're super super complex so um, just because you have foot pain, like I've said in several videos before, doesn't necessarily mean that the, the biomechanical problem is actually coming, or coming actually from the foot. It may be that the hip is weak or your spine is weak or your pelvis is, um, I like to call it off, off kilter, cattywampus, whatever. 
Um, and it's because of, in my mind, it's because of muscular imbalances and um, these, these biomechanic issues. So it would be great if orthotics could solve all of your foot problems and solve all of your back pain issues. Um, some people actually do have a leg length discrepancy. So the, the length of their femur or their tibia bone on one leg may be a little bit shorter than the other leg. And so for those people, it actually is important to accommodate that difference with like a, a heel lift. So there are lots of reasons why people will have orthotics made, um, but I like to say if you are going to have them made, make sure that you see a professional who has been trained extensively in the um, not only the foot mechanics, but also just entire lower body biomechanics, so foot, ankle, knee, hip. So if you're going to get orthotics, I would suggest first and foremost that you see either a podorthist or an orthotist. So those are professionals who train for years and years and years. Uh, well, I don't know how many years exactly, maybe it's a couple years, but still it's a lot of time spent just on like how the foot functions, how the lower extremities and, and, and legs function. Um, and then they, they will construct their own, you know, div, uh, own insert to then give to their clients to put in their shoe. Um, when I was an early physical therapist, it was super fun. Like I actually would say that I could custom fit people for orthotics and I would have them on their stomach and I would put like a casting material um, like plaster or whatever that's called um, on their foot and then I would align their ankle and the back of their heel so that the the ankle was in like what we call the subtalar neutral which is like an ideal neutral foot position for all the bones and so I would put them into that angle we'd let the cast kind of dry and then I'd kind of pluck it off their foot and then once they would dry completely we send them away to a company and then that company based on this, you know, mold basically from the foot would, would come up with an orthotic that would fit these people. So the problem that I have with orthotics, the ones that I used to like send away for, and this is, you know, 20 years down the road, now I can look back and reflect. Um, they were really, um, really like firm and hard and they were uncomfortable for people. So um, I don't love that. And the, the ones that I've seen that are made by podorthists and orthotists are usually made of like a leather material and much softer materials that are gonna feel a lot better underneath your foot. Hey Lynn, thanks for being here. Um, so the podorthists and orthotists are the ones to see. Some podiatrists and some chiropractors, and like I said, some physical therapists um, have been trained to do them as well. So I'm not saying that you can't see them, but I would do your research if you're gonna get orthotics. Um, they're expensive too, you know, we're talking three, four, sometimes $500. So it's an investment and you wanna make sure that they're made well and that your whole body is taken into consideration, not just your feet, because the orthotics are not just about your feet. Um, so what else do I want to tell you? So some of the must, like if you're going to have, um, if you need orthotics here, based on my 20 years experience as a PT, these are some of the things that I think you absolutely need to, um, consider and kind of keep in mind when you use orthotics. I believe that an orthotic needs to cover the whole undersurface of the foot. In the past, I've seen orthotics that just kind of come midway to the middle foot. And I had a lot of patients that would have soreness on the bottom of their foot, right where that ridge is. So I think it just is better to have a full foot coverage and then you're not in this, you know, high heel position. So you wanna, you don't wanna just accommodate the back of the foot to get that subtalar neutral. You also have to um, have the whole foot in the same plane really. So definitely you want full foot coverage. You don't want something you know, rubbing against the middle of your foot. The other thing is a lot of, um, I, I think a lot of podor podorthists and orthotists would tell you, and I used to tell my clients to do this too, but it's really important to wean yourself into wearing something like this. Hey Mark, thanks for being here. Sorry I didn't say hello earlier. Um, uh, when you first get it, your foot and whole body is gonna have to make some adjustments and get used to having this thing underneath you. So the other thing is that if your hips are weak or your pelvis is not aligned well, and that's part of the reason that you had the, or the foot pain or wanted the orthotics in the, uh, in the first place, if you don't correct the hip issues and the 
whatever core and pelvic weaknesses that are at the root of all of that, you just stick something underneath the feet, um, your body's not gonna be happy. So then if you go and wear those things all of a sudden for like the whole day, and let's say you walk around the mall or state fair or um, whatever, if you're walking around, even like around the airport, which I know we're not really doing a lot of that these days anymore, but um, still, that being said, you just wanna start with maybe like a half an hour the first day that you get them. Make sure that you feel comfortable, and then each day you can kind of add a little bit of time as you feel comfortable. You don't wanna just go you know, all or nothing. Same goes for if you're gonna wean off of them. If you've gotten used to wearing them, but you don't really want to anymore, and you wanna strengthen your own foot and body biomechanics, um, I would say if you're used to wearing them all day, don't just take them out, because then same thing goes the other way. Your body will have be become reliant on them, and then they won't know what to do without them, and you'll, you'll have some sort of pain exacerbation. So wean in and wean off. Um, let's see, oh, have them reassessed every like six months to a year. I don't know what the pedorthus will truly recommend, but I don't believe that um, based on what I've learned and how, how dynamic and how changeable and adaptable and um, capable of healing our bodies are, I believe that they need to be reassessed like frequently, especially if you're doing a lot of walking or standing, you're gonna kind of crush the material and it may be that what you were originally given is no longer supporting the things that you were hoping that they would support. Hey, Shannon, thanks for being here. You said you would be, and here you are. Thanks, my dear. Um, so let's see what else. I have my little list here. Um, okay, so at the hospital the other day, I was waiting in line, you know, six feet back. So, um, and my friends and family know that I do this. I, I love people, and I want to help their bodies, and... I just notice things and I can't help it. And there was this lady standing in line in front of me and she had orthotics on inside of a shoe. Um, they used to call them like a mule. So it's like, you know, the front of the foot is covered but the heel is open on the back of the shoe and she had her orthotics in there. And I was like, you know, God bless her for trying, but those things were flopping around inside of those shoes. So if you're going to wear orthotics, make sure that your foot, or excuse me, your footwear accommodates them. Um, you know, don't just be putting them in. Um, I've even seen people in like sandals with their orthotics and like, it looks weird to me. I don't know. I mean, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, but um, just make sure that your feet, I, I actually, I, I will say that I did have one patient who, she couldn't function without her orthotics and um, she did have a pair of sandals that, that would actually hold them in well. So typically sandals don't, but she had some really, you know, um, nice orthopedic sandals that that she could have her orthotics in. So typically you don't want to wear, you know, the orthotics with your sandals because they're just going to not stay where they're supposed to. So the final thing that you have to consider with orthotics is um, for some people, um, I, I would like to think that there could be an exit strategy. We were born without orthotics. Yes, like I said, if there's a heel or a leg length discrepancy and you need something to lift the heel, um, that is probably the best way to do it. Or if it's a really significant lift, you may have to just have a heel lift put on your shoes. Um, but I believe that our bodies can change and heal, like I said earlier, and with the right trained eye to help figure out where are these problems coming from. Um, there can be exercises and um, really simple techniques that you can learn to do at home to get your body functioning well and efficient and get those biomechanics working for your, uh, like in your favor from head to toe. So that is what I have to say on orthotics. Like, I don't think that they're awful. I think if you need them, there is a time and place. Just like, you know, I don't love surgery, but Liam needed surgery this week. So um, we are so lucky to live in a time where we have options and we have choices and we have professionals that we can work with who will take good care of us from head to toe. So, um, hey Neha, how are you? Neha, I'm sorry. Um, good to see you, my dear. Um, so that's what I have. If you have any questions about what we've covered here, please let me know. Feel free to share, uh, ask a question in the comments section. Next month, I'm going to be doing my final Tuesday Toesday tip on actual Tuesday. It'll be the 30th, um, unless there's some unforeseen 
um, thing, which I don't know that my family could handle right about now. So I'm really hoping that I can come on on the 30th to do uh, a Q&A on all things feet. So if you've watched some of the previous videos and you have some questions about things that you didn't ask, feel free to just, you know, send me a private message and ask the question. Um, I already have quite a list of questions that I have compiled, but please, you know, bring, bring it on. I'd love to, you know, answer any of your questions to the best of my ability. So you can also hop on live next week and ask in the comments then, and I'll do my best to answer them then. So um, I appreciate all of you, and I hope that you are appreciating your feet and giving yourself some love. And if there's anything I can do for you, I'm here in Brookfield. I would be happy to um, do a complimentary consultation. I offer them to anyone. You can sign up for that directly on my website, 1212bodyworks. Um, dot com. My brain is in a little bit of a slow mode today, but yes, 1212bodyworks.com. And um, just sign up for that easily there and we can meet in person, talk about what kind of issues you might be having, even if it's not a foot thing. I love feet, you know that by now, but um, I, can, I can help muscles from head to toe. So anyway, hope all of you are doing great, enjoying the summer and this beautiful weather and stay well and um, take care. See you next time.